So have you guys ever been watching a stream and then all of a sudden some homie just like drops 50 gifted on your streamer and now they're celebrating like, oh my God, thank you for the 50 gifted. And then this animation is also happening. And this animation itself is actually incredibly easy to do. All you guys need is Blender, an editing program that can open basically images and sequences. And then of course, stream elements, which everyone has, you can just, just streamelements.com. Not a sponsor, but that's how we're gonna actually create our custom alert to actually have that happen and pop up. And it's super easy. So with all that being said, let's go and hop into the video and let's get this thing started. Do not forget about the everything pack. The first link in the description, the product where you basically get all of my 32 products for one purchase. And then every other product that I come out with for free via Selfie, you should know about it. So we're inside Blender. Now, this is your first time ever using Blender. I just want to say this video is very new friendly, but if you're like an incredible noob and you want to like get, you want to get a little bit of the basics down, I would highly recommend my video over here. So first things first is of course, add the text. Now I'm going to be using Using that 50 gifted as an example you can use 10 you can use five you can even use your own logo if you guys want to i'm not going to show you guys to put logo in i have a video on how to put your logo in the, in blender as well over here just in case so throw this in we're going to do shift a text just like so so shift a is basically how you add any sort of mesh or anything else in blender so shift a text to add the text in here once this is added in here we can press s on our keyboard to scale things if we need to i'm going to scale it up just a little bit and also blender is pretty weird in order to edit the text you have to press tab then we can of course go ahead and just edit the way you need to so i'm going to do 50 for me and then to exit that edit mode we just press tab once again and now we have our 50 in here and now to make it look less boring and flat we're going to click on the actual text properties right here we are going to firstly change our font so under regular we're going to choose this folder here we're going to find a font that we think is just really nice i'm personally feeling 50 -oh. it's a free font for the record if you want to use the same one as me if you guys like it a lot now from here we're going to add some depth as well so under geometry you go to extrude and i'm going to put my extrude to about 0.10 just like so and i'm going to add myself a nice good amount of extrude i think that looks pretty good now this is the personal preference that i do have if i zoom in for a second this is very very sharp you if you like that look you like that look but i personally like to do one little thing bevel right here under round, we use depth here. I'm gonna change it to 0 0.01, press enter, and then it just makes it just a little less round that I feel like just, I don't know, personal preference. If you want if you want bevel, you can keep it. If you don't want it, you don't have to. Now, just because I want to, I'm gonna rotate this and just make sure this is kind of like, I can just see it. Now, here's one simple key thing that you need to do, right? You, I'm looking at you. Click on the text, right click it, go to convert to mesh. If you do not do this step, do not comment, then saying it doesn't work. If you guys do not convert your text to a mesh, it will not work. But once your text is in a mesh, you can press M on your keyboard to create a collection. So we're gonna make a new collection and we're gonna call this collection 50 gifted. And then we're gonna press create. And all that ends up doing is putting our text into a group or a collection in this case, that way Blender calls it and just has this be set for us to actually do our next step, which is shift A on our keyboard again, go to mesh and add in a plane. And again, I'm gonna press S on my keyboard to scale things up to a pretty decent size. Then I'm gonna use the move tool right here bring this up all the way here. And I'll say this is pretty good. Now with your plane selected, this is basically gonna act as our plane for where the actual particles are gonna come down from, okay? So we're gonna select on the plane. Then we're gonna select on the particles tab right here. And we're gonna click on the little plus button right here to add in a new particle system that I'm just gonna basically call gifted because why not, okay? So if we're just press play, you're gonna see these little balls fall down. It kinda looks like snow, it's kinda fun. But we're gonna change that immediately, okay? So we're gonna scroll all the way down first, okay? To where it says render. Now we're gonna change this render from render as halo to render as a collection. Why'd I say it like that? Collection. Under the collection tab, just like so, under your instance collection, we're gonna click on that. And that is where we're gonna click your 50 gifted collection that we just made with our text inside, okay? And now if we were to press play, if I zoom in, you're gonna see a whole bunch of little mini 50s falling down. Now, naturally we don't want it to be that small. So what I'm gonna end up doing is under the same exact tab under render, okay? Scale, and I'm gonna change my scale from anywhere between like 0.50 to like one. I'm gonna personally do like 0.65 is like my sweet spot that I think I want for this. Maybe even like 85, okay? That's kind of big. We're gonna go 77. Now, immediately you can probably say there's a lot of things falling, Sesso. That's the first that we're gonna do is go all the way up to a mission. And under number, this is the amount of spawns that are gonna happen for your logo or number, whatever you end up doing, that's gonna fall down from this plane. So for me personally, my sweet spot for this, for this in like very specific instance, unless you like it, is 150. Play with it, have fun with it. But personally, I think 150 looks pretty good because there's enough falling for me that feels like it's like a lot, but not like a crazy amount. And now also under a mission, we have end. So end, I want you to look at your timeline right here. Mine is at 300. I think it's a good number to have. If it's not already set to 300, set it to 300. Now for your end though, make sure this is basically 100 or 50 
less than the amount of your timeline, okay? So mine's at 200 because it's 100 less than 300. And you might ask yourself why, but basically the way this particle system is gonna work is that it starts at 100 and ends at 200. Now, what I mean by ends is that it ends falling. Although at 200, which is right here actually, it stopped spawning, it's gonna keep falling all the way until about 240 or 250. So I just wanna make sure you guys know, make sure your timeline's at 300 and then your end is at 200, okay? Oh, and then also lifetime. Just in case as well, put this to 100. You guys will notice, if you guys did not change that just now to 100, you guys will notice sometimes that your camera is where it's at and right at the bottom, the particles when they fall down, disappear right at the end. After this, we're gonna go to velocity. And under velocity, the only thing I wanna worry about right now is clicking on the word rotation and the orient orientation axis is at velocity in here. Now, this is where you can have a little bit of fun and change either global X, global Y, global Z, have some fun, see what works out for you. But firstly, for me, I think velocity here looks the best for this instance. And you, like I said, explore when you guys get it down because it's kind of fun. I'm gonna choose my randomize. I'm gonna put this at 1.2 or like not 1.2, 0.12. There we go. And for the randomized phase, I'm gonna put this at 1.5, press enter again, and then I'm gonna click on dynamic. So, so far what that did for us is when I kind of scroll through this really quick, you can see it's no longer spawning in this weird face up position. We now have a little bit of rotation and it's also a lot random throughout every single particle here. So it feels a lot more scattered and random. So now under angular velocity, I want you guys to take your amount and change it to about, we'll just say one. And what this will go ahead and do is if I press play again, you'll start to see a little bit more rotation happening with the numbers. And I feel like it looks pretty decent. I would say maybe a little bit lower. Let's go like 0.45. Now I want you guys to focus on is your physics and not not so much anything over here, but I want you to focus on forces. Now your drag and your drop is basically the speed at which it's dropping, okay? I personally feel like my drag and my drop are probably best at 0 0.02, 0 0.02. I feel like it's fast, not too fast. Maybe it's a little, maybe a little too fast. 0 0.05, 0 0.05, that feels pretty healthy. I'll say 0 0.05. So 0 0.05, you guys are gonna follow my exact same thing, but play with it, have some fun, and make it different if you guys wish to. Also, in this case, for the record, this text right here, we can just hide this and move this over here. You don't have to put this in the frame. This is just to showcase the emulation, so you don't you don't have to worry about that anymore. I actually might like to say we're pretty much done. Now, I just want to show you guys something really quickly, again, to play with some stuff and make it separate and different and fun for all you guys. And for that, that setting is under force field settings. Now, I'm going to put on self effect and make sure you put on effector amount at one. Make sure you press enter and then just make sure to just double check. Sometimes it goes back to zero. Under type one, something of these settings, there's a lot of settings to have fun with and try out. And just in case you enjoy it, I just want to just show you that it's a thing. Okay, so just for instance, a vortex. I'm gonna put the strength to like four, flow to like 0.2 or something. I'm gonna turn off rotation for basically any of these settings. But you can see if I add vortex, it's doing some weird something. It's all up to you, but I'm personally gonna choose to not even have it on or even worry about it. Just because again, I think the effect works perfectly fine without it, but play with those settings if you guys like to. We need a camera. Now I already have a camera. I already have it kind of pointing at this point right here as well. But if you guys don't have a camera, and you guys don't know how to add a camera, it's shift A, boom, click on camera. Make, make sure you don't add anything into this 50 gifted collection. The camera needs to be outside of it or else you just saw before, it'll start interfering with our, uh, our particles. So make sure that's just never gonna happen, okay? For your new camera, the way to actually set it up is just kind of like zoom into a certain spot. And now keep in mind, when I move around this canvas right here, there's a lot of 50s that when they drop, okay, they're kind of backwards, right? And there's like, there's a few that are four, but most of them are backwards. I would rotate your canvas until you find a good spot where all the 50s are pretty much like as straight as possible. And as I scroll around, I'm kind of noticing that there's not that many. And this is where I would go back into my plane, go back into my particles, and then say maybe for my randomized phase, I might do 0.5 instead, drag this down. And now if I rotate it, we're seeing a lot more 50s straight. So when I have my actual camera selected, just like so, I can press Control, Alt, Zero, and I can set that kind of up just like so, right? And now with this camera, I'll click on the first tab really quickly first for the scene. For the render engine, I'm going to choose Eevee. You can use Cycles if you guys wish to, but Cycles is going to take you ages to render. And Eevee is pretty much good for this personal alert thing. It'll look good enough, I promise. For all this other good stuff, you're probably going to keep it the same unless you guys want to change some things around, if you guys know. But Motion Blur, I do have checked. Now, my shutter is actually at 0.01, which is basically hardly any Motion Blur because I don't want it to blow too much. It feels a little bit too noisy. So 0.01, I kept it on there. I feel like I liked it rather than zero. But also under film, you wanna make sure transparent is selected. Uh, that also will help you get rid of the HDRI that's in the background that you might have on the HDRI, excuse me. If I mention HDRI and you guys have not set up your scene, again, please watch 
the Blender video. But once you guys are good with the render scene settings, we're gonna go to the output and make our resolution 3840 by 2160. And also for your output, click on the folder and please save it to a place that you can remember. Because the way that Blender works is when you guys render an animation, it basically renders out a bunch of images. And that way you can put them in the actual editing program and then open it up as a sequence. And then it'll just basically make a full movie. I keep saying movie because of Apple, but a video. Now for your file format, choose it on PNG and of course put RGBA and you guys are good. And now really quickly back to the actual camera itself. If you guys click on the camera here, you can change your focal length as well if you guys need to. Oops, just like so you can change your focal length and why we'll change the height and all that good stuff. So, so I kind of have mine just something like this so that when they're falling, the frame feels like it's pretty much filled and looks pretty good. You can still see the actual person in the background. Just imagine, right? But now just because I know a lot of you guys are gonna end up having this problem, if you did not put this plane up high enough, Let's say your plane is like right here and you're like Sesso, it's still out of the frame. It looks pretty good. But what the problem is that when this, when these things start dropping, you're going to kind of notice they're spawning in. So this is where I want to make sure that wherever your camera is, make sure you have this a little bit higher, just enough so that you can't see them spawn in so that when they are falling, they feel like they're actually falling from a different frame or like the sky and not just like right at the top of the frame. Okay. The last thing I do want to introduce you guys to really quickly, not a sponsor, but it's blender kit again, not a sponsor, but if you guys were to download blender kit, right? download it, it'll end up giving you guys a zip file. Then you wanna go back into Blender, go into Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, click this little button right here, this little drop down, install from disk. You can just type in Blender in your search bar and then select the zip file itself. You don't have to extract it, please don't. Select the zip file, press install from disk, and then you'll get Blender Kit immediately, okay? And the reason why I think it's just super cool is because it gives you a bunch of free materials. Now, Blender Kit is right here, it's located right here. You might have a little area you might have to click on for the record. Click on Blender Kit, then find and upload assets, click on materials. You can just press a little I right here to show them just like so. And then here you guys go, just a whole bunch of textures. You can flip through them. I can personally just type in, I don't know, lava. There you guys go, there's some lava. You want some lava? You can put it, you put it in theme. Cause I see this one right here, I kind of liked and I used it before. So silver cast iron to apply them. What I gotta do is select on the actual text layer itself. Click on the text layer, click on the actual material itself and it'll, it means instantly apply it. And just for the record, if you guys don't see the actual material the way you guys would like to, this circle here is your different viewport. So it's not gonna look like this. This is like your viewport render. This right here, you this is your final render, your shading render, okay? Click on that, that's what it's gonna really look like. And I think that's pretty good to render. So to render this thing out, we're gonna go to render, render animation. And like I said before, it'll start rendering the animation in that folder that you guys ended up choosing as your output. Once you guys have it rendered out, we're gonna open up Premiere, or like I said before, you can probably do the same exact thing in like, Final Cut Pro or Sony Vegas, you basically just need to have the option to kind of make it into a, or open the actual sequence in an image sequence. So I'm gonna make a new project really quick. And what I'm gonna wanna do now is go to File, Import, and make sure you guys find your output folder that you guys made in Blender, just like so, and double click on it. And this is where you're gonna see if you guys open it up a whole bunch of images in a sequence of that render that you just made, okay? And the way to actually open this thing up is click on the actual first image here. And then you just wanna make sure image sequence is selected. If it's not, it's not gonna make it a video. And please do not try to be that person who just like clicks on all of them, tries to import them, and then try to put them on the timeline. Don't do that. And what's gonna happen here, it's gonna say 001 PNG, but actually if you drag it in, it is actually a video when you actually go ahead and play it. So now this is where you're gonna to say to yourself, this is pretty good, but I really feel like I zoomed in. I feel that way every single time I try to render this out. So I'm gonna go to my effects tools really quick, go to scale and just zoom it in. But anyway, if you guys are using Premiere like I am, we can render this thing out by going to file, export, and we're just gonna use uh, Sense and Media Encoder. Now again, I don't know what happens when you're using Sony Vegas or like a Final Cut Pro, but I'm gonna personally render this out in WebP or WebM, just a heads up. So I'm gonna click on format and on this format, we're gonna click on format again, and we're gonna scroll down to where it says WebM, not WebP, WebM. And for the WebM format, we're gonna make sure we uncheck audio because we don't actually have audio unless you do have audio you can also put it in afterwards to in stream elements but i'm going to choose to turn that off i'm also going to make sure you render in maximum quality and then i'm just going to scroll down on this video tab until we find something that looks like this which is include alpha channel that way it of course renders as alpha and then from here we can just render this thing out and the reason why i use webp and not like a mp4 like first you notice with alerts it does lag pretty easily with uh, mp4s on stream elements so webm i think it's pretty much like a default like understood thing like universal but WebM is that format you want to use for things like on the web. That made way more sense than I thought I needed to because I just never really put it together. Once this renders out, we can head into Stream Elements just like so, but I already got it rendered out, so we're going to do that right now. So now that we are at Stream Elements, the way to make your own custom alert, again, not a sponsor, but this is how you're going to do it, is go to Stream Elements. You want to go to Streaming Tools, click on Overlays, and click on Create a New Overlay. Here's where you want to have your overlay resolution at 1080p. You can press Start. And now to have this only pop up when 50 subs are gifted as a community sub, this is what you want to do. So add widget, go to alerts, and then choose alert box. Then we're going to make 
sure we uncheck everything else besides subscriber alert. And then once we've done that, we want to click the actual cogwheel of subscriber alert. And for these settings here, we want this to be completely empty, right? So we don't want this to actually pop up when someone actually subscribes, only when someone gives 50. So for this, we're going to make sure you just press X to clear the video. We're also going to clear the sound. We're going to put this all the way at zero. We can choose. I'm gonna, I just like to choose like layout text over image just because we definitely don't want to have any alert message pop up either. So it's just delete that. And from here, it is now fully erased. Now, what happens next is you want to go to variation settings, uncheck subscriber or resubscriber, uncheck subscriber gift and only key community gifted subs on, especially even uncheck this. Then you want to click on the cog wheel of the community gifted subs. And then from here is where you want to have your conditions set to exact and the requirement around of course is the 50 so for me it's 50 gifted but you it might be 10 gifted it might be five gifted just have that set to the number of gifts that you want it to pop up at okay and chance at 100 percent. and this is where you also want to change your video just like so and of course to upload you just want to press upload drag and drop it or select the file itself but once you guys of course have it inside you just click on it just like so submit i'm going to personally choose layout text over image again my alert message if you guys want it to keep up and pop up you guys can definitely do that i just think it looks cleaner just for the sake of it but if you want to keep the name up there which i think is it's pretty valuable I'm, i don't know i'm I'm not a streamer anymore and if you guys do end up keeping it scrolling down here so you'll find all those settings for the uh, actual text settings but for me since i don't have any i don't have to worry about that um but the last thing i also mentioned is the alert duration so you want to make sure your alert duration is basically one second longer than the video durations my video is nine seconds so i'm gonna make sure my alert duration is at 10 and once i say that's good to go i can press save variation we're gonna drop this down we're also gonna exit the settings and the last thing i want to do is go to position size and style and click on this this is where we want to change this to 1080 or 1920, excuse me, by 1080. Center the widget just like so. And then from here, you can now rename this into whatever your gifted subs is. So gifted subs 50 is mine. And last but not least, do not forget to save right on the top right and you're good to go. Now to put this in OBS, all you guys have to do is click on the copy overlay URL. But once you guys have your OBS in here, you want to right click, add browser. We're going to change this to alert. 50. Under URL here, of course, is where you're going to actually end up pasting that copied link that you guys got from Stream Elements, 920 by 1080. And of course, I'm going to size this up to where it needs to be sized to. If I were to just quickly try to emulate subscriber event, gift one, you're not going to probably, you're not going to see it pop up, right? Even gift, you're not going to see it pop up. But community gift, only, only way to test it for the record, you can't press community gift because that's still just one. So custom, we're going to choose the amount at 50 to your one sub and then community gift and then press submit. And now is where you hopefully end up seeing the actual animation pop up. Sometimes it kind of lags a little bit. Press submit. I'll kind of move this out of the way afterwards. You can see I, this is not on the video, like the animation, like I, this is OBS. Once you confirm it works, that's exactly all you got to do and you guys are good to go. But with that being said, that is the end of today's video here today. And hopefully it was easy to follow. Hopefully the vibes right for you guys as well to learn. And just, yeah, hopefully it just ends up making your streams look better and you can just do it on your own now. But with that being said, Seso HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking productive guys. Later, much love. Also happy 2025. As always, don't forget to check out the first link in the description down below, the everything pack. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.